Hey everybody, it's W1RCP, Rob here, and I am going to do a project that is probably been known before, but this is how I'm going to do it today. This is going to be a QRP 9 to 1 Ballon, which will be a random wire antenna, and I'm going for about 41 feet. For this one, I have a 28 foot, it's a K K6 ARK 100 watt ballon. It's pretty big, definitely not something that I want to carry around in a backpack. It does have quite a bit of weight to it. So this one uses this particular uh, toroid right here. And this happens to be one that Adam, K6 ARK, sent Eddie and myself as a replacement for one that we broke. He sent us two, so I have an extra one. Now, if you want to do this project, these, you you can't get these uh, without a special order. The, you have to buy them in bulk. That's where K6ARK, he's got the market. And I'm, there's no complaints there, none at all. What his products that he make, and let me preempt this by saying I'm not sponsored by him. I just do this because I like his products. K6ARK occasionally has these on order on Amazon. That's where he does his sales. So I recommend that you buy them from him. But if you're in the market to do a project where you can say, cool, I built this. Well, you could say that with his too. But I had to do a few other things for this project. One of them is I had to print, and, and this is not printed at all. This is the circuit board that I made on a CNC router, and I made it around the RF connector. I don't even know where my camera is. So the RF connector, I got some, I made the measurements, and they fit together quite nicely inside of my circuit board. If you did not want to make your own circuit board, if you don't have a CNC printer, or I mean CNC router, or you don't wanna use ferric chloride to etch one and manually drill it, you can take some PCB material, and I'm gonna turn my book around because I've drawn sort of how this thing started, is you can take an X-Acto knife and cut the copper in this particular shape right here. And so you have your out, which is one connection. This is where the toroid, one of your wires is gonna go in. This right here, is all ground because the outer edges of this RF connector are the grounds. And then the center, you can etch that out with, with your X-Acto knife, breaking the traces, take a little sandpaper, and then you have two holes drilled. You don't have to worry about traces getting to those. These are just for your strain relief. And you might use some hot glue if you're worried about too much strain breaking your wires because we are going to use some heat shrink. And this is quite large heat shrink that we're going to use that's going to go over the whole thing. These are leftovers from some of my other K6 ARK kits. For some reason, one of them, I did not use this. So today I'm going to use it. I'm going to repurpose it. I already had it. So if, if we were to measure this particular piece of heat shrink out, it is approximately one and a half inches in diameter. So uh, might be one and a quarter. It's really hard to tell because it's all smushy smushy. So you can get you a piece of heat shrink that's gonna go around your circuit board, however big you make it. Amazon sells it, uh, Har uh, Mouser sells it, and the Ballon, or the toroid, if you want this toroid, and I'll put the specs from Mouser on the screen, but the specs are a 21 millimeter outside diameter, 13 millimeter inside diameter, and then it's about 11 and some change millimeters in height. So it's almost a half an inch tall. This one is only a quarter of an inch tall, and that's where Adam makes his so tiny. They're very small. So Adam did a great job of designing these. I'm not gonna say that I ripped off his design, but I'm definitely 
taking some creative commons here. Um, giving him full credit for this. I didn't know how to wind a nine to one ballon until I looked at his hundred water and said, I want this to be a nine to one. I think at the time he didn't have too many directions, uh, but I did some searching on the web to figure, figure out how to do a nine to one. And it's different. And we're kind of uh, going to make them right now. So the hardest part of this project is always how much enameled wire do I really need? Well, it's better to go with too much than too little. So I'm going to start with approximately three and a quarter, three and a half feet. And I'm going to dig up here for my tools. I know they're up here. We need the wire cutters. These these little diagonal cutters, I've had these things. I call them my nippy snips, but I've had these since the beginning of my electronics um, adventure. And that was back in about 2007 when I really got serious about it. I used to go to Radio Shack as a kid and do stuff, but we're gonna cut three and a half. Feet. I wish I had some of the stuff that I had as a kid. I had some pretty neat little projects that I built and I had one of those 50 and one kits. That's what really kind of sparked my interest in electronics. Okay, so we take the enameled wire. I have my drawing here as to how this thing's gonna work out. We can move that out of the way. And I'm gonna move this over just a little bit you start by winding the ground first and go ahead and leave approximately an inch of that sticking out. This is gonna be, that might be two inches, but leave, leave a good amount sticking out. This is your ground connection. It's gonna be your starting point. It's sort of like anchoring the boat. This is always gonna be there. Everything else, the rest of this monstrous amount of wire has got to go through the center of this toroid. That's why this isn't fun. It gets kinked, it's aggravating. So we're starting on the inside with this particular one, the ground, and we're gonna make seven turns evenly around the toroid, seven turns. You can do, I think up to 10, and if you have a larger toroid, like a fatter one, like those, what, 240, 140s, 240s. You know, if you're using some of this thick stuff, you may need more than seven. But seven seems to work. So when you're counting your turns, it's for every rotation. So as soon as this passes through the center, that's your first rotation. So we're gonna try to get it to go evenly around. Now, the way that I've been doing this is I push a loop through the hole and then pull the rest like this. And there's some dogs scratching at some doors. I wish they would quit. You know, I did a video the other day I, I don't hear super well. I talk extremely loud. I didn't realize the dryer was going, and in one of the videos that posted uh, about a week or two ago from this one, there's a dryer going the entire video. It's the one where I'm sitting beside myself in the Jeep. So that is our first turn. Now we're gonna go for our second turn. Now at this point, it does start to kind of grab a hold and keep itself in place. And then again, I take and I push this through the center. And you can see that you can push it through. It kind of keeps it from getting kinked up, which is what we want to avoid. Now, you will get slapped in the face a time or two by this, this wire as it goes through. So we're going with a third wind. This is probably gonna be the most boring part of the video. If you if you wanna skip to the next part, you can. This is the, see, I've already lost count. So this is one, two, three. This is the fourth wind right here. We're pushing that through. 
there's a mathematical computation that you can do to figure out the length of wire that you need and then you only need to add an inch or two maybe an inch or four because of the circumference that's around this every time you do a loop you could you could use a mathematical formula to figure out exactly how much wire you need I'm just not that exact. I'm not making these for a living, so the aggregation of waste is not going to affect me. This is this is pennies right here. It's cheap. Okay, so we're down to this is our first this is our start. So we have one, two, three, four. That was the fifth wind right there. We're going around for our sixth. Pushing our sixth winding through the center. And now we're gonna have our seventh winding and that's where the magic begins. So I keep forgetting to keep this on the camera here on the table. I'm doing a two view shot for you here. We put this down through there. There is our seventh winding. Okay, at this point, you are going to take, and it doesn't matter how much you take, but you've got to make a fold and a wind, a twist, because we're going to have to put two pieces of wire through the input. So this is going to be your input to the, um, into your, your, it's the input, which is the output from your radio. So take this, bend it like this. And then you're going to twist it together. So twist it together. Don't worry about the excess that you leave. Just make a nice little twist, just like that. Okay, once you have that nice little twist, you know we're gonna cut most of that off, but we left a nice little pigtail there. Now you're gonna go seven more winds. So you want to orient your wire. So we have seven more winds to go. Here's our beginning. We're going to bend this out to the edge just a little bit. And we're going to go, we're coming up and around. That one already passed through. So now we're starting our next seven windings. You've got your ground hanging out right here. You're going to go right next to it because each individual one is gonna go before the one you did last. So, let's do it right this time. We have one, that's our start. So as you push this through, it should start to follow and lay next to the windings that you've done already. So let's see if this actually does. There's one. Now it does go around. It sits right next to the next one. And you can see that hopefully in this video that it's right there next to the next, the last winding. So we're gonna push this through. At this point, just keep up with your windings and you'll be okay. I don't even think you need to count them anymore. Just make sure that each time you come around, you're laying it right next to the last or the first round of windings. The good news is every time you push this through, your bend is going in a different spot and it's being used and wrapped already. So now we are going up to the next one. Hopefully I'm doing a, a, a decent job. I know it's a little dark right here on this camera. But you see we're still next to that winding. So we're gonna push this through and we should wind up with this next winding and they should stack neatly and not overlap. I don't know if you're OCD and I really don't think it matters. I just noticed I'm starting to lean as, as I work on this. I'm trying to follow the windings. But if they overlap, I think it's fine, but I'm, I'm partially probably OCD about this thing. I want it to be perfect. The first one that I had on there, I probably wound it three times to get it right. By then, the wire looked like this. Okay, so we're still winding. 
they're still falling next to the previous winds that we had before. Again, we're taking, we're pushing that loop through the center of the toroid. I knew this would be the longest part. Um, I will take a break at the end because there's some other test tools that I want to bring out. I want to go see if I have a 450 ohm resistor in the garage because they say that you can clip a 450 ohm resistor to the end of this before you completely heat shrink it. And if on your analyzer it comes out to 50 ohms, then you're good. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I've never done that test before. I've always gone on faith that it was gonna work. All of them that I have built have worked. Um, Eddie, unfortunately, we built one for him one time and it did not work. And I don't know where the heck we went wrong. But you can see I'm still against the previous set of windings. So I've done good up to this point and now we're about to find out. I think it all goes with pushing that loop through instead of trying to pull the wire from the this end. I, I, I really don't use this end. This end is not gonna be your friend. Just push it through. Okay, we have made it to the second set of windings and now we're gonna come around and we're gonna go over this section, which is gonna pass before this guy, but it's gonna come up against this winding. So this sticks up like that. And now you'll see the next set of windings falls before the last winding. That's what you wanna see. Ground's kinda of getting crazy over here. He needs to calm it down. You go around seven more times. So it's 21 windings all together. All right, so now we have fallen right here and we should be coming up against, and now I gotta see which side to go to. It goes up and over and falls in between the wire that you have sticking out for your ground and falls right next to it. Now, I think you could probably, nope, you don't want to. You want it to fall right there, so let's do it. This is probably where I always mess up. So we're gonna push it through and you're gonna find out if I'm right or if I'm wrong. We're gonna pull that through. And if we look at the bottom, this is where I always get them crossed up. You do not, you want that ground to be on the other side. So I'm gonna push that back out. Let's see if this is right. This is where I tend to get a little wonky. We want the wines not to overlap. I don't want them to overlap. So there we go. The ground is chilling all by itself right there. Now, you should be able to get the rest of these to fall into place. That's where I messed up every time and didn't even realize it. You want it to go past the ground and be against these guys right here. So you see how they're neatly coming together. You can see that this is this is half the length that it was now. I think I overestimated how much I needed. Three, three and a half feet might have been a bit much. But we're gonna go through, keeping an eye on the dogs over here. I don't know what they're sniffing. There might be a donut in my jacket. Okay, back up and over back through yeah there we go then you're up against the next set see it works out groups of three it's the way to be so 
So we're doing good. It's only taken 20 minutes to do this. Plus or minus how much talking I've done. But talking you through winding a 9 to 1 ballon, which is is actually when it when it works out right looks pretty nice. We're almost there. I can tell that I pulled a little bit too much wire off of my spool. But if you look at this spool, I have so much more. I can I can probably make another 10 or 20 off of that. Now the uh, brand of the brand that I'm using is called BN Tech Go. It's an Amazon brand, pretty cheap. You'll notice in a little while that. Hey, guess what? Be in tech go. Be in tech go. It's the same guys or gals. It's the same people. All righty. We're down to our last wind. Three. Push that through. And this one is going to be to the inside when it finishes. So, that right there. Now, if you want to neaten these up and scoot them together a little bit, you can. I don't think that it's going to matter all that much, but it does say even spacing does help. But, I mean, I don't think that you can get much more even than what we've got it. That one maybe. That one might have been a little close, but, I mean, that, that is beautiful. So we have ground, which should, when this is flipped over, ground is going in there. So think about this. You're looking at it from the bottom. So ground goes there. Your input goes there. And then this is your out. So this crazy one right here that's a foot and a half long that is wasted, wasted material, that is your out. So that's how you keep it straight. Now, how am I going to keep it straight even more? Before I cut it, I'm going to put me a little right angle in it. And then I'm going to trim it to know that that is my out. Just so I don't forget. Because, I mean, I can forget. I've said I mean four times now. Okay. Now, the next thing that we have to do is make the actual connections. So, word on the street is you can put a 450 ohm resistor across this somehow. The out and maybe the ground. I don't know. I've never done that test before. I'm going on. This is going to work. Okay, so the next thing that you have to do is you've got to get all of this enamel off so that when you solder it onto your circuit board or whatever you're going to solder it to, I don't see why you couldn't just do this in the air and use some hot glue if you wanted to to make it work. So for your ground, you connect it to ground. For hot, you connect it to hot. And then your output is your output. There's nothing that says you even need a circuit board. You could just put you some hot glue and some spacing in there and you'll be okay. Try it. Let me know if it works. I just have a, happen to have a CNC router that I have access to. So now let's figure out what order do we want to put this in? Because if I'm not mistaken, I have to solder this in this way. And the way that I'm going to have to do it is with the copper facing up. So ground, for me, mine is going to be a little bit backwards. So ground goes in this hole. That's the ground. You can tell because it's around the ground. Input is going to go in the input like that. And this is going to be the output. 
So I will go ahead and solder that on, but the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get a piece of sandpaper and we are going to sand the enamel off of this wire. You could, there are other ways to do it. Some people like to go ahead and burn it off. Lord, I don't even know if this thing works. This is my wife's candle lighter. Let's see, so you can burn the enamel off. Yeah, look at there. The other thing is it's getting really hot in my hand. So that's one way you can do it. And then you might wanna sand it off. And let's see how that works. You know what I didn't bring with me? But it's uh, in the kitchen behind me is my multimeter. We could do a check to see if that enamel has actually come off. We're back. That was fast forwarded and muted and cool tunes. This is my multi-meter. In the words of the old, um, well, that's not plugged in. In the words of the old Navy electronic straining videos, my handy dandy multi-meter. And then it winds up being something about the size of a desk. So we're gonna put this like that. Let's see if they, that's a good sign. So it works. Let's check it with something that we know has continuity. Okay, that's good. There should be ground continuity there and not in between, good. Let's just check each of these about where we're gonna put the solder and see if we hear a beep. This is a good way to tell if we have all, oh, that's a good sign. So we have most, there's still a little bit on that one. And it's still a little bit on that one. I'm not happy with that. So let's go ahead and keep sanding here. Cue the music. here to here see I didn't do very good up to that point but that did good okay so I think it's as good as it's going to get if you really want to get risky try this just pinch down scrape that towards the end of the wire it's another way you can do it but if you bite down too hard you know what's gonna happen you're gonna cut your wire. So we could scrape it like that to make sure that we've got a good connection. We do not want a not good connection. Oh, shoot, I don't even know if that's even putting a, a dent in it. Now we're cutting this part short. Now, this is, the, this is how this is gonna happen. I have to plug in my soldering iron. The soldering iron is now heating up. We have some Radio Shack 6040. It's probably an antique. I've had this particular roll, I think, since 2007. Okay, we're gonna get uh, the tip cleaner and we're about to make some connections now. Guess what? I forgot what was what. Okay, this is ground. The inside is your output, and this is your input. How did I remember? Because I knew that ground was the first wine, so it went to the inside. 
output was the last wind, so it went to the outside. And you can't miss your input, it's twisted. Okay, we're waiting on the soldering iron to get heated up. We are going to solder the connector first. I try to keep my hands out of the way for this. We're going to clean the tip and then we're going to tin the tip. Now the first connection I'm going to make is going to be one of these ground pads. We're going to heat up both the pad and and the bad thing about the making your own circuit boards if you heat up this copper too much it will um peel right up okay looks fairly straight it's also fairly warm so now we'll finish the job So this is the ground on the outside shouldn't have any connection with this. So that's good. That's a good sign. But all of the ground pads should have continuity. That's good. But none of this other should. That is excellent. As far as the input, there should only be one. Yes, so we have done very well thus far. Now here is what we need to do next. We need to go ahead and make two jumpers for our wire. This is probably a little thin to be using for this, but we're gonna make two jumpers with this wire. And they're gonna be about that long each. That's about two inches. So we have one and we have two. These are gonna be your antenna and your counterpoise. So now we're gonna get the wire strippers out and we're gonna wire strip. And we have to be careful because this stuff is fragile. Let's take that up a notch. Okay, there we go. Strip this one. There we go. Now, I'm actually going to crimp these onto some bullet connectors. So the end that I strip over here I need to make twice as long because it's gonna have to go further so we're gonna make it that long and I'm gonna go ahead and tin that so that when I crimp it inside of the bullet connectors if they'll stop rolling away when I crimp it inside of these it'll give it a little bit extra to hold so we're gonna make these very straight and we're going to put some dark marks on my paper as we tin the tips of these guys right here. That'll just make it a little bit stiffer. There we go. And we could even fold it in half if we want extra strength. So there we go. And I'll show you. We have to push that up in through there. That's going to crimp just like that. 
and I guess you can't go too far because uh, Yeah, well, it's in there. Yep. So it's going to be just like that. I'll show you how we'll crimp that in place in just a minute. This one, I, I know I've got too much solder on the end of that, so we'll trim it. This one is going to push up inside of this one. Now, I have some crimpers that'll work just fine on that. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So these are my Klein crimpers. You just put it in the color that you have. These are red. So we're going to put that right there. Make sure the wire is inserted fully and not sticking out the other side. And then you go crimp, 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 crimp. And then pray to God that doesn't come off. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. I think it's in there. So now we're going to do the same thing with this one, making sure that it's not all the way through. Because you definitely want these bullet connectors to fit in there. That's how we can take it apart. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go crimp. And you can also check your continuity on these as well. That's in there. So if you're worried that it, the, the metal didn't crimp, you can, man, we got a mess going on here now. You can check for continuity. So there's continuity there. Continuity there. These are your inputs and your outputs. So depending on which direction you wanna go in, we gotta look at this again. So we have ground. This is your counterpoise on this side. So we want our counterpoise to go in the direction. We actually want to put it in backwards. So the counterpoise is going to go this way. And then we're going to solder that in place like that. That's going to be the counterpoise. So we're gonna tack us some solder on there. We'll put this in that right there. We put it through backwards because we want the counterpoise to face in the same direction as the coax. Just the way we're gonna run this bad boy. Okay, so we'll get that to where we can actually apply some solder. We want it to get on both the contact, the pad, and the wire. You can smell that phenolic board burning when you leave it on there too long. So that absolutely looks fantastic. Solder went all the way through because there's a little bit of solder right there. We're gonna snip that off, okay. And there's your strain relief. So that should keep it from being an issue. That points down. That is your counterpoise. We want our antenna coming out from what's pointing towards the trees. So we're gonna go the opposite direction on this one. So this one, you're gonna go down through the copper this way. Uh, let's, let's wind this so it actually goes in there. You're gonna go down through there. And, and, and I also want on this one to put some, uh, I'm sorry, for this one, because there's a strain on it, I do wanna put some heat shrink on this one. So I, I need to trim that just a little bit. I do want some heat shrink on this one. That's just my idea putting that in there. So we're gonna put the heat shrink on there. Then we're gonna go through the copper this time and come up from the other side and go into the pad. And that's tough to do when I'm trying to show it on camera and actually see it. And there's still a little bit of tape left over from where it was stuck to the um, CNC router. Okay, 
I think that's it right there. My eyes are starting to go blurry on me. There we go. We can take and bend that to the side just a little bit so it doesn't move out. Let's go ahead and pull the rest of that through the strain. And now let's do the same thing. We're gonna solder that in place. Feels like it's soldered. It looks like it's soldered again on these homemade circuit boards when the trace is only a thousand of an inch thick. It's hard to tell. But at this point, we can do a check again for continuity. The ground should be grounded against this. Now, the out is only going to be grounded or connected to that pin so we are not going to be able to check continuity on that one through the toroid yet so for out we should have continuity we should not have continuity through ground which is great and through the counterpoise it should be connected to that that is excellent now rumor on the street is and i've heard from reputable sources that there are folks that say 50 feet of coax 50 feet of coax is necessary okay so here we go we have to remember how are we going to do this so this is ground and that's what we have right there so guess what this one is going to have to bend down and this is where i messed up this one bends down this one's going to go through that one is your out that solder and then i'll re-solder that joint so having a helping hands when you make big mistakes. It's easier said than done when you got shaky hands too. It's way too late to be fixing mistakes. I'm stupid. All right, we're back. We got some test equipment. Found a 470 ohm resistor. I just used the plug to plug it through the two plugs right there for the counterpoise and the antenna. And it looks as though I've got 450, uh, 400, oh my gosh, get it right, 42.5 ohms. So it's not exact. But it's good enough. I think it's going to work. So that was the test with the resistor in. It had a 4.0 resistance and now, or a 4.0 SWR, which, I mean, shoot, man, with a tuner, you could do that. Random wires do like tuners. So once you take it off, there's uh, not really much to say there. So that's using the rig expert alpha alpha dash 170 and i think this is going to work so let's go ahead and position it to put some heat shrink on that's this big guy right here and then we'll measure out 41 feet of wire and 17 feet of wire and we'll crimp it on so let's hope that this fits over all of that it appears that I did fairly well. My mistake with the center pin is definitely showing right now. If that, if that one little piece of wire wasn't sticking out, this would go on there so much easier. But we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. And now we're going to heat shrink all that together. There's what goes to the antenna. That's your, that's your output. 
So that should be a nice spot to heat shrink that. There's your counterpoise hanging out the bottom. And we'll turn off the soldering iron so we can actually heat shrink. It looks like there's going to be quite a bit of heat shrink. I'm going to smush this together, which should give me maybe a little bit of weatherproofing. And there's a piece of heat shrink on that as well. So let's go ahead and get the heat shrink going. And we're back. So now it's heat shrink time. We're gonna get this bad boy going about 700 degrees, 710, somewhere in that range. I'm gonna leave that connected to the coax so I'll know exactly where the coax is gonna be. So let's see how this turns out. Let's get that nice and straight. Let's get that edge to curl in first. Okay, that curled in quite nicely. some pretty nice heat shrink to shrink up that neatly. Now this heat shrink does have glue in it. So I'm going to get that nice and warm right there and then I'm going to do some magic. I'm going to burn my finger. So we'll go ahead and hit the power on that. What I want to do is take that glue and smush it together. And that should give us a smidgen of, holy moly. That should give us a smidgen more weatherproofing. We get so hot, it's peeling the uh, label off the bottom of the uh, solder. Okay, so not something that you want to use out in the weather because water is going to go in your coax could put it into what i like to do is take a bottle and put it up in through a bottle and then tilt it down like that and have all the stuff coming out it, it tends to work that way but that's a done deal we're going to measure out 17 feet for the counterpoise so there's three. Six. Nine. Twelve. Fifteen. Now we're going to add 18 feet and we'll trim it in the field. So there's about 18 feet. We're going to cut that. Snip. We are going to strip a pretty good amount off the end. And I'll show you why. I'm not going to solder this one. We've got some pieces parts floating around on the table up here. No, they're not, they're right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and bend it in half like that. And then I'm gonna push that piece around and kind of twist it. And that is what we're gonna push up into our bullet connector. And then we get our clines. We set that in there like that. Make sure.
sure that it's good. Now, another thing that's nice to do here is to heat shrink this. That's the counterpoise. We'll put that away neatly in a minute. Now, the part that gets fun is we want 41 feet for the radiator. So, in this case, I'm just going to pull off a whole... Here, you can watch it spin. I'm going to pull off a whole bunch here. This wire has made quite a few antennas. I had 250 feet of it. Make an in-fed half wave, so you use 63 feet random wires. You know, 28 feet is what I've got. And then this one's gonna be a 41 foot. You know, you can also take the end, if I wanted to use it straight up the jack kite pole, I could just fold it over at the 28 foot mark for that and just take a piece of tape and let the rest hang, I bet it would work. All right, so three feet from the edge of the table to here. So we need to go count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Thirty. Drop the thirty. Thirty-three. Thirty-six. Thirty-nine. And yeah, see where the three comes in now. Forty-two feet. We will trim that in the field. So we're making our last cut, snip. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna strip off a little bit extra here. I'm, I decided I'm not gonna heat shrink this. I might heat shrink it the first time it breaks because you know, the stuff is flimsy, the connections are flimsy. It does wear out after a while. It happened to me in the field not too long ago. I just stripped a little extra off, used the bullet to hold it in place, finished my activation, came home, fixed it. So we're gonna push that through. We're gonna put that on our wonderful, this is, this is chompy number two. And get that in place, make sure the wire is in there. And then we send it, okay. So now, the way that I like to store these normally, I don't have my bongo ties with me. I could run and go get them, but I like to take my wire and just do this number. I actually think I have a plastic wire winder for this. 41 feet's a little bit longer than normal, so it may take a few extra do 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 dos to get there. This is how we store our wire. Now, the next thing is, how is this gonna perform in the field? Well, we've got some, some extra wire that we can loop it and make a loop so that we can tie a piece of arborous line to. And there's that. So, what is nice to do with this is to have you something that you can clamp it. And I may go do that in a minute. So. Let's set this under here for now. I actually do have a clamp. Now the next one is your counterpoise, 17 feet. Goes pretty quick. This little silicone type wire is so flimsy and smooth. Wrinkles just fall, especially when it's been in the sun. So that one falls out right there. We have our Balan, not nearly as pretty as all the other ones, but dadgummit, I think it's gonna work just fine. Pause. Unpause. I've got one of these. You can get these at the depot of the home. They're called Cable Cuff Pro. I think 
this particular size should be perfect to hold both your radiator and your counterpoise and keep them nice and neat. The way that I wound it, it shouldn't kink up when you unwind it. Oh yeah. Oh, my camera's crooked. I must have got excited. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there you go. There it is. That's a full-fledged QRP antenna. And guess what? My wife's dog ate my good bone conduction headphones. So, I have a second shocks case. Go figure. All right, so we... Drop that in there. So now I have random wire, which I really love a random wire. And then we have 63 foot and fed halfway. So there's the 40 meter band scan right there. It's two to one. I don't think you can ask for better than that. Three to one. Now the test is to see, can we actually get it to work? It's a little higher on 80. Nothing a tuner can't take care of. It does too. Call CQ and see what happens. Side. So here's my test. I ignore the mess, but got the antenna up there. 50 feet of coax. The dog chewed that one before I could even get it hooked up, like right under me. So now I need some new RG316. Oh my gosh, that makes me so mad. But I've got it running over my YouTube green screen and then running and hanging up in the kitchen. So that's, that's my makeshift green screen right there. That's all my material, but it tunes up. Let's try um, 1800. Let's see what that does. It, I mean, amazing that I built this antenna and it actually works. Actually, 18.100, I think, is FTA. Let's go to 18.085. Look at that. 
Well, as they're holding their conversation, it works. It freaking works. So I did shorten it down to 41 feet at the end and 17 feet on the counterpoise. Tunes up nicely. I'm quite impressed with this antenna. So W1RCP, hey, if you watched even half of this video, I appreciate it. That helps my channel. And if you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. I'll try to bring some more. 73.